so we can go and uh, go and see June in the studio, maybe. Talk about love, you know. I think it's important how a man lives and I think it's important how two artists can live together. And I am very proud of my wife and, and the way we managed to live together for so long and through difficult times. And we are both artists and it didn't interfere and it takes some doing. I'm independent and she's even more independent in what she does and follows what she believes in and she really works every day and in a totally different idea that I work on. So she taught me a lot and I always learned a lot from women artists. Here. June gets an idea every day, every day. I don't get an idea every year. I get an idea maybe. I had the last idea in 1960 or 1970. But it's, so it's, it's wonderful to live as a person that can say that and say it truthfully, you know. So, so it's, you know, right? Right? Thanks, that was really nice, Robert. More fine music for Sunday morning. Why do you want to make these pictures? June never, never made up an image of herself as an artist. It was just her work. Whereas I did make up an image of the living in a shack, you know. <laughs> There's no he communication, nobody around, and you know. He didn't say so, that. Sometimes I said to people, I do go fish, you know, to make ends meet. But, uh, yeah. So, you know, you. it's a different lifestyles, but we, we do live together and we make, make the best of it. I never know what to expect. I mean, I leave him for 10 minutes, and when I come back, I, have, I can never second guess what he's, what's on his mind or anything. But also, my work gives me the energy to ride the waves with him, because he's a very, he challenges the, himself a lot, you know. And not, he can never rest at anything. He can't let anyone else rest at anything, so. And so I think I'm, you know, the right person for him because I can stay on that rocky boat. I can, you know, I have good sea legs. That's, that's what it's like in this house. We watch each other. I think that's what she thought. I, I don't know. I, I, I... We never fight, but every now and then we each scream. Very yeah. loud. <laughs> just very loud. I mean, yeah. just all of a sudden, I, this is new, because I'm not a yeller. How do you scream? How do I scream? I'm not going to do it now because I break all your equipment. You want me to do it? Nah. You got the idea. No, you do it then. <coughs> That's right. That, sometimes it has to be like that, you know, <laughs> that you have to scream. Because and he didn't used to do it, but I noticed he liked it. I didn't expect him to. And now he screams. Come on, scream your scream. Yes. Come on, you be fair. Be fair. Come on. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it now because there's no reason now. It's a theater now. Oh, you agree. You had, right. no, no. Well, he screams. Well, it's just, you know, you, you, you have enough of everything. Then you scream like, ah! <laughs> you know, and that's. Don't you love so, it? You know, it's, it's, maybe this is a little theater, but I, I wanted to get June in because, you know, June and I, although we work on very different things, we work together about life, you know. And the whole thing is about life. What I get to, to, to watch her do her work and not be discouraged and continue to work and work. I mean, it, um, it encourages me, it, it helps me. I think I get a lot watching an artist, you know, work and the struggle she has of make putting a show together. And you know, she's so different from me. And Robert is like a man with chopsticks. 
and he watches and watches and then he takes the two chopsticks and he just picks the most es la la lasting essential thing out of the chaos, you know, he just has that a marvelous way to select something very powerful. My daughter finished high school in, in Vermont, then she moved up here for a few months to be with me. Then she got a job in the, uh, there was a kind of a home for damaged people and older people. She worked there for a while and she liked it very much and she was really very good with the people here. And um, then um, she decided to travel and she had a boyfriend. She went back to New York and then she left. Uh, to go alone on a trip to Mexico, and uh, then she, um, in Mexico, and then she went to Guatemala, and uh, the last letter I got from her was that she was uh, working sort of in a small airline with a German girl, and they used to fly to Tikal, to the ruins, and she would alternate with the girl. And um, that's how the plane crashed there. Was, uh, it was around Christmas time, 1977, 74. 74. And she was 20 years old, and uh, that's how she died. And, you know, it's, uh, she was really um, full of life. You know. I'm always talking more about my son, who, who did change and needed more attention at that time than, than I could give him. A person like that de depends on, on love from his parents, which, which he didn't get enough of. And the worse his situation got with his mind, the more he needed them, and the more, more difficult it was to give it to him. I walked back from the visit with Pablo. I always have hope, but I realize that I would try, and I think it means a lot to him if I try. He knows when I try. I just don't know how long I can do it. So this was a very, extremely difficult period in my life. And June was very helpful, but, uh, you know, it, um, so that's how it ended.